After Dad lifted the biggest trophy of them all, season 4 needed to be a good one for me. So I went on the hunt to improve my Werder Bremen side with some top talent. And that's because job wise, there was nowhere really interested enough to leave Bremen. And Dad ain't going anywhere because he still needs to finish Portugal. However, bringing in a player with the caliber of Rafael van der Vaart might increase his chances of doing just that. And on a free transfer too. As well as Carlinhos, who could be picked up for such a cheap cost and instantly give him elite levels of squad depth. Not to mention where he was getting him from. An interesting job did appear though, my old club sporting as Louis van Howard decided to leave the role to fill the vacant Netherlands job. But just like that, disaster struck, as Sergio Aguero had his release clause activated by Liverpool and refused to talk to Dad about signing a new contract. With a double whammy of it also happening for Dad through Jonathan de Guzman, his European champions are being stripped apart just as his rivals welcome legendary manager Scolari to the club. Meanwhile, during Dad's crisis, I was playing Bayern Munich in the Super Cup, and closer put them ahead. I received a bid from Bayern Munich from all three of my strikers and Van Persie this preseason. Funny enough, but it was Stefan Kiesling who brought me level. It was also Kiesling who missed the first penalty in the penalty shootout, as well as Palacio, one of the other strikers who missed the decider. Before Dad's two-star attackers left though, he played Scolari Sporting in his own Super Cup, which only got entertaining on the 89th minute, but Dad ultimately lost. It was a different story in the UEFA Super Cup against Lazio, despite Lazio taking the early lead. New signing Van der Vaart stuck Benfica back on level terms, but the game went to extra time where, returning from injury, Oscar Cardozo banged in the winner for Dad. But Omega Dad had a plan for his transfer crisis, and it involved contacting an old friend of mine who hadn't been enjoying himself much at Liverpool since leaving my Bremen side, Diego. Dad, you lost two massive players oh, after no. winning the Champions League. I was looking at that and thinking, I've done so well, what a great season I've had. Everybody's going to want to stay for me, being world, you know, Champions League winners and all that. And I'm thinking, right, just build on that. What do you think have I got? Probably just a centre-back. All I need is one centre-back. was all I really think I need, needed, really, and a couple of squad players, possibly. And i got a team that could do this. And then, bang, this happened to me. I just couldn't believe that this guy left me yeah. after being a Champions League winner. I mean, £53 million pound was his release clause. That's nothing, neither, is it? No, he's had a couple of good seasons for you as well, so yeah. including scoring the winner in the Champions League. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he wasn't the only one who had his release clause activated because no. Jonathan de Guzman left very quickly after yeah. as well. Same scenario, £54 million pound release clause. Well, I just got the player in to take over. Van der Vaart. Yeah, take over from um, Aguero. And then, bang, this happened to me as well. So I was thinking, no! Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I had well, to go hunting for had, another player then, didn't I? You had Van der Vaart already lined up. He yeah. came in on a free transfer. That was just to give you more backups, to yeah. be honest, just to build on the team that you already had to obviously go for uh, the, the Portuguese league, because that's the only thing that's keeping you in Portugal right now, is to beat Sporting. Yeah. Speaking of Sporting, I had new a new manager. I had a bit of luck there, didn't I? I was going to say, out of everything that happened, them losing Louis van Gaal might be the best thing for you. 100%. 100%. I mean, I looked at buying a couple of their de their defenders, then I try yeah. and weaken them, but I just couldn't afford them, could I? No, they were asking for double the price well, because it was you. Yeah. So um, I thought, right, I've got to try and get better than them. But then this happened to, to them, and I thought, that's even better for me now. Yeah. Losing man in uh, Van der Gaal. So, so I mean, I was pleased with as this. well, he he actually had like, was it nearly two years unbeaten? Yeah. Yeah. Because he was unbeaten the first season, <laughs> yeah. barely conceded any goals, uh, and you were struggling to keep up with him. Now Scolari comes in. I mean, Scolari's no mug. Oh, he's a good manager as well. Phenomenal, but, legendary yeah. manager. Uh, been around the block, of course. I've just got all really that um, he left because there's something. There's a bit of. He, no, he unhappy. went to the Netherlands. Oh, did he? He went to the Netherlands job. You know, to be a squad like that, you think, oh, there must be something going on in there. So I'll just open. Really, that's what it was. But yeah. that's why he's gone to be there. So that's fair enough. I mean, in the two years, he won two leagues and two cups. Yeah. So there we go. That's didn't uh, win the Champions League. The boy did he? No, he didn't. All right. But we're very early on in glory. I don't know if you to start being a bit big headed about it. <laughs> Remember, I'm the villain in this channel, all right? <laughs> Don't start turning people against you. Yeah, I'll, I'll get, I'll all get, of a sudden, I'll become the underdog everybody's rooting yeah. for on the baby face. I had to get past you. I'm the curse. I've done it. Yeah. Well, yeah, fair play. So, with Sporting uh, changing manager and you losing a couple of players, you brought in Raphael van der Vaart. You had a lot of money to replace them. 
as well as bring in a couple of squad players. And brought in, of course, the left-sided centre-back, Felipe, yep. uh, which definitely strengthens your defence. I mean, he's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a, a, a centre-back there, but he wasn't naturally left-footed. So yeah. I, I, I just knew I had to get one in. That makes it even stronger then. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. £28 million as well. Seems worth it. Uh, Yusuf comes in for £5 million. Now, yeah. he is a very good CDM, but only going to be a backup because he doesn't actually start in nope. the lineup when you... Uh, I mean, he was quite cheap team. as well. I just couldn't afford to let that go for that. You know, a good player for that price, you just got yeah. to get him in when you can, haven't you? Uh, Carlinhos came in, 3.5 million pound so, left back. Yeah, spare left back, 3.5 million. Yeah. Bargain, isn't it? Then Michael Balak came yeah. in. This was my replacement for my midfielder. Yeah. I thought it was a good price for you. I know he's 33, but I need to, I'm, I'm only after a job being done this season. Yeah, that's it. This, this guy comes in, we know he's good, so oh, yeah, he comes in and fills that space for me. Yeah, legendary midfielder Michael Barak in from Chelsea, yeah. which is funny, right? Because your two players went to Chelsea and Liverpool, and you bought the two players to replace them from Chelsea and Liverpool. Well, here we go. So you basically just did a swap deal. Yeah. £15 million pound there for Michael Barak, plus money from Jonathan Du Guzman. Yeah. Uh, but then you also signed Diego from Liverpool for £67 million yeah, after we... they bought Aguero for 53 yeah. So where do we know this guy from? Well... My old player, yeah. at Werder Bremen. Yeah. I sold him for sixty-five million pound. You bought him for sixty-seven two seasons later. He had a good season last year. Yeah. He only started twenty-one games, but he got thirteen goals and five assists in the Premier League. Very good. He played well for you as well. So yeah, he did. It, it was an all-brainer when I got him for that money. So I thought, well, he fills in that space as well. Yeah, the shadow striker. We Very know he's. Good. We know he's good. We know he'll score goals. I think I've done, I've done well. Yeah. Uh, you changed the tactics slightly, despite yeah. winning the Champions League. Yeah, but I just you didn't really change what it does. It, no, I, you basically I, just flipped it. Yeah, I, I, I wanted my shadow striker to be central. Yeah, that was the only reason I went for it. So I just bought him in and, and put the the shadow the the well, the player that was positioned yeah. there, yeah. which was Aguero at the time. Yeah, I wanted Aguero in there in that position. Yeah, and um, so I bought him into that position, put the shadow striker to the to the right rather than it was Aguero to the left. Yeah. So that's, that was that was my thinking. I lost Aguero, but I just kept the same win because Van der Vark is just as good, I think. Yeah, but and he's, he's actually not, he's not as good as Aguero, no. but he is good still. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Rafinha still in Team Cana. Felipe Marquez is your new two back, uh, well, back line, your centre-backs. Yeah. Uh, Taiwu is there as well, Taiwu. I think, I think now I've got a really strong defence, so now I think... I've got a team to do it. Cardozo doesn't even make your team. No. Obviously returned, scored in his returning match as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, I player. was surprised with that, but what a player to have as a reserve case. Yeah. I do get an injury. Let's have a look then at your schedule because you lost in the Super Cup, yeah. um, which was when you still had Aguero and yeah. Jonathan de Guzman. Night, well, it didn't kick off into the 89th minute by the looks of it. Then it was the 90th and the 92nd and you lost it. Well, you think you, you went one you, up, blink, you, you lost. Yeah. Oh, unbelievable. And you were down to 10 men as well. Yeah. Uh, Boa Vista, though, a good start in the league campaign because this is all you really care about is that league yeah, campaign, 6-0. Yeah. Uh, the UEFA Super Cup, that's always a nice one to win, I guess. Yeah, it was good in, win, that. Played in Serbia as well. You, yeah. beat, you beat Lazio 2-1 after extra time. Uh, you beat Naval 6-1 or Naval. Aves, 3-0. Another 3-0 against Rio Ave. And then what happened here? 6-0 against Porto. Yeah. So now I know I've got a, a team to do it now. Yeah. I've already conceded one goal in the league. It's still Gus Hudink. Um, yeah. You absolutely tonked them. I'd be surprised if Gus Hudink is still at the end of the season yeah. at Porto after that. Because yeah. that is disgraceful. Uh, let's have a look at your Champions League group. You've got Chelsea, <laughs> Juventus and Basel. That's a difficult group. Considering you just won the Champions yeah. League, you've been given a difficult one. It is, yeah. I mean... Um, I'd still like to think I'm going to go for it. Yeah. I mean, I, I am the champions of, the, of Europe at the moment, so I'll be disappointed if I don't go for it. Okay. Uh, let's have a look to see what I've been up to. I had a bit uh, bit of a quieter window, but I still spent £24 million, including bringing in Klaas Jan Huntelaar on a free transfer. That was a good song. Uh, yeah, that's a really good one. He's five-star according to my team. But I did sell a couple of players. Hugo Almeida went to Sporting. I thought, make them a little bit better, won't you? Real Sociedad bought Thomas Hitzelsberger off me because I didn't really play him too much. There's a couple of players who left uh, as well on freeze. But I also brought in Leonardo Ponzio from River Plate as a good backup option for that centre midfield. 
midfield, but he's actually really good, to be fair. Uh, as well as Juan Manuel Torres from San Lorenzo, who my players and my uh, my scouts rated as one of the best players in the world when I bought him. But there are a few weaknesses, obviously. Technically, he's, he's not amazing. He just does the centre midfield job uh, that you want him to do. But for £6 million, I don't really care, to be fair. And then finally, Felipe. We both bought a Felipe. Yeah. Mine plays in goal. Uh, and he's got 20 reflexes. So Brilliant. I lost my backup goalkeeper and I brought this guy in for £5.5 .5 million. I don't think what I have done is strength for my first team outside of bringing in Huntelaar. But... I needed good backup options. That was my my biggest problem, I think. Uh, with with my tactic, I was sticking with roughly the same. I had a centre forward on support there. I've made a DLF on support there instead and made two advanced forwards. And I've changed this role to a deep line playmaker on defend to give me a little bit more support in the middle there. Uh, my best 11 now looks like this. So Kiesling and Palacio are the two up front, but they both like to break the offside trap, whereas Huntelaar, doesn't and he's not exactly quick so he is better in that dlf role dropping back a little bit got good passing and vision ability so maybe he can get a couple of assists instead of goals uh, van persie still on the left jean mutinho still in the middle with ponzio actually going in there let's got mertesaka at the back abue of course on the right I did try and go for a better left back, failed in that. But what I did manage to succeed in is keep all of my players because I had so many offers from Stuttgart, oh, Arsenal. Yeah. They were all coming, weren't they? Uh, yeah, I mean, Bayern Munich tried every single one of my strikers. <laughs> did you? They went every single one and Van Persie. The only one they didn't try was Huntelaar and Podolski. So they tried every single one. Uh, but I, I stayed strong and none of my players wanted to leave. And that's been good because I'm currently top of the Bundesliga. Despite losing to Bayern Munich in the Super Cup on penalties, as you've already seen, I then went and won 10-0 in the Cup with a rotated team. Uh, Greuther Firth, I went to, uh, they came to my, my, my stadium and I stuffed them 6-3. Cologne was a 6-1 away win, which is great. And Dortmund, don't think, oh my gosh, you beat Dortmund 4-0. They are trash on this. They are <laughs> absolutely terrible and I beat them 4-0. So I am currently top of the Bundesliga, but I am still nowhere near Bayern Munich in terms of uh, how we are rated in the game and in, in terms of who should be favourites to win the league. So I've got one task and that is to win the Bundesliga. You've got one task and that is to win the Portuguese yep. league. And then that's when we start scrambling for the next big role yeah. in Europe that pops up and maybe create ourselves a manager merry-go-round. So let's see what happens. My Werder Bremen side was easily the best of the rest in the Bundesliga. There wasn't many teams who could give us a hard game and we started really well. The problem is that Bayern Munich are just better than us. With Louis van Gaal leaving Sporting, Dad's European champions looked comfortable. Winning 16 out of 16 with Sporting to play next. That is unfortunately where Dad's winning streak ended, however, as he drew against the Portuguese champions 2-2 away from home. A small reinforcement was brought in through Brazilian midfielder Dudu for £6 million. Pounds. But that wasn't enough to stop a loss eventually coming from Porto. And my Werder Bremen side were so bad in Europe that we actually dropped down into the UEFA Cup. That could be an advantage though. While Dab was piecing together another incredible run in the Champions League, even beating Manchester United 4-0 at home. But my failure to catch Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga did leave us with another German Cup run though. And back-to-back -back finals as we look to retain our trophy. But Dad's win against Manchester United that I mentioned was in the semi-final and means it's back-to-back -back Champions League finals for Dad. But what about our league form though? Can we finally win our domestic leagues? Okay, I finished in second place in the Bundesliga. Closer. I, I was close at times, but nine points off the top. I mean, I only lost one more. It's just the draws I mean, When you look at your year, year thing, you were there all season. Yeah, I dropped down to third a couple of times, yeah. but other than that... You were just chasing the whole season, really, yeah. weren't you? Uh, Palacio, 31 goals. It's quite impressive. Uh, let's have a look, dive a little bit deeper into it. They only conceded 21 goals, but I scored 14 more, but conceded 10 less. So my actual goal difference is higher, but again, it's one of those things of game management, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas their goal difference is less, and obviously they conceded less, but scored a lot less. They only managed to lose three games and draw two of them. One of them was against me. They managed to get over the line more. Yeah. Uh, whereas I failed to do that four times compared to them. 
uh, and that's what's really cost me there. I mean, I could have done with beating them, ideally, but going away to Bayern Munich and uh, getting getting a 2-1 loss and then actually drawing at home, that's my next step, I guess. That's what I need to do uh, coming up in, instead. What I did notice is mines were relegated, Dad, and that meant that I think Jurgen Klopp was sacked. We left the managerial role throughout the season. Right. So, Jurgen Klopp is now at Torino, age 43. And this, of course, is before he ever went to Borussia Dortmund. Yeah. So, his path has changed at Mainz. <laughs> uh, and surprisingly, they didn't bring in Thomas Tuchel. No. <laughs> so, I don't know what's going on there, but they are now in the second division. So, Frankfurt are in third place. That warms my heart a little bit, but Dortmund are down in ninth there. Uh, let's have a look at the season profile. Kieschling got 23 goals. That's good, but Miroslav Klose is, again... Just a league above everybody else on 29. Palacio and Podolski with the two highest average ratings, though. And Palacio and Podolski also had the two highest assists. So Palacio's phenomenal season for me, really. I mean, he's very good uh, across the pitch. But up front, he's been doing great stuff for me. 18 goals and 18 assists in just 27 games is remarkable, really. I need to keep him. I need to keep him next season. Uh, he is wanted by Chelsea and Real Madrid. So that's going to be easier said than done. Yeah, definitely. He is also 29. So that's going to be the highest value that he is going to be worth. But how, of course, do I do in the DFP Pokal and the Champions League, knowing that I dropped into UEFA Cup? Yeah. Because that could be the business end of the season. This is for the one me. I really don't need you to win. Yes. So, did I manage to win it? Oof. No. Round of 16 by Valencia, which is a, is a bit of a sad thing, really, because when I looked at who was left in the UEFA Cup, I actually found some my chances. Yeah, I think Valencia, AC Milan, uh, and Ajax maybe were the difficult clubs in there. Um, I think everybody else, I, I, I stood a chance of beating, really. But you come up against a Valencia team when they've got this man playing up front, and already you're on the back foot. Yeah. Uh, so, and they got Otmar Hitzfeld in there, who at the time is one of the best managers in the world. Of course, he was at Bayern Munich for a while, dominating the Bundesliga. So that's always going to be very difficult to do. I did, though, win the DFB Pokal for the second season in a row, beating Frankfurt in the final. So you beat your, you, you, you beat your favourite German team and you won your favourite cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, so that's two years in a row, um, but that means nothing. There we go. Uh, dropped into UEFA Cup because I actually did terrible in my group stage, which we didn't have a look at, but I faced Arsenal, Feyenoord and Lons in there. So not great at all. Lost two games there to Feyenoord and Arsenal away from home. Not fantastic. Goals-wise, I'm a little bit disappointed here with Huntelaar. Only 16 yeah. goals and 9 assists. But he, he still did have a good 44, average rating. Still played 44 games as well. So Yeah. I wonder if he got injured or nothing, was it? No. He had a good average rating and he is wanted. He's roughly about £40 million. Pound. I don't know whether to cash in on somebody like that right now. Because uh, all our strikers are in their mid to late 20s. So I'm not like in a hurry to sell any of them. I don't no. feel like I need to. Well, to be fair, the age of my players are quite good to carry on this almost like rebuild. Yeah. To, in my quest to win the Bundesliga, I guess. I think I'd be silly if I decided to leave unless it was for Bayern Munich. I mean, we'll have to see whether there is any jobs coming up in a minute. But Dad, how did you do? Won the Portuguese League. Didn't Bayern move Bayern. from the top position. That nope. The whole Get season, you. you were top. Only lost one game against Porto. You finished in second place. The good thing is that I didn't lose against Sporting. Yeah. You but, didn't, we drew but I didn't beat him over. <laughs> drew against him both times. So, uh, yeah, Del Bosque's done you there, hasn't he? Or Scolari. So, the only, two, the only points that I dropped again was against the top two teams. Yeah. Yeah. So, you beat every I was consistent one, again for team. another season, but this time, I, this time I, I beat. Well, I didn't lose against them, so. No. Uh, 146 goals, only conceding 20. Uh, as Porto's manager is still good, I think, so he's managed to stay in the job despite getting absolutely spanked by you at the start. Uh, you didn't even have a top scorer. No. Where's well, your top scorer's gone? To be honest with you, I'm quite pleased with that because that means I've everybody contributed. Yeah. I mean, Delgado's down there with 13. He was joint 13th. Oscar Cardozo uh, was 11th with 16. Balak's even up there. Diego, Van der Vaart, and Pazzini is in fourth. So. Yeah, they, they, you dominated the other player statistics, but goals-wise, it was so spread out yeah. that you didn't need to win it. So that's you done, Dad, yes. in Portugal. Business done. Yeah. 
Did you leave an iconic season behind though? Maybe a couple of cup wins as well. Champions League. Back to back <laughs> Champions Leagues. And the cup as well. And the cack attack in Portugal. Done the treble at Benfica. Unbelievable. Got rid of that curse and won it again. Yeah. Fair enough. 2 1 against Arsenal in the final. And it lovely to see Benfica's name there as two pass back winners. To back. Get in. Yes. Lovely. Now you've got to leave them. So. <laughs> There we go. Uh, let's have a look at group stage. You topped the group stage. You only lost one game to Chelsea away from home. So that's decent. Round of 16, you knocked out Udinese. You stole that defender, so no wonder yeah, why they conceded definitely, seven. Definitely, yeah. Uh, after that, you went into the quarterfinal and beat Lyon 8-3 on aggregate, who are pretty much winning and dominating the French league yeah. right now. Uh, semi-final, you knocked out Manchester United as Arsenal knocked out Barcelona in Get that in. final uh, to go to the final to beat to meet you. In Beat there. the Arsenal as well. Yeah. Get in. Delgado Even better. And Raphael van der Vaart with the two goals after you were 1-0 down as well. But he definitely deserved it. He dominated the game by chances. Yeah. Uh, and XG especially. So, fair play. Well done. Uh, in the other cup final, which you, again, already won. Sporting Oh, I finally beat them. And you finally beat them. 2-0. So... What a way to leave, eh? It is by a winning great the Champions season League against for Arsenal. you. <laughs> My only saving grace now is that you got to find a job. Yes, it's you true. Gotta, yeah, you gotta do what I did. Yeah. restart almost in a way. Um, See, I don't know what I don't know what to do. Really, I'd rather just resign and hopefully start a merry go round. Or just sit and wait. Yeah, I don't know. Sit and wait is dangerous. It's dangerous, yeah, it I know. is dangerous. So let's have a look at the job centre because there are a few big clubs available, including. See, Stoker. I know Stoker are in the Europa League. Yes. They finish in fifth place. Jurgen Klingsmann is actually favourite for the job right now. Uh, I actually think Roma's in the UA, UA for League. Yeah, they are. UA for Cup. So Roma's there as well. I mean, Roma still have Totti. Still have De Rossi. I mean, De Rossi is one of the best midfielders in the world. And he's 27 years old. And Totti is 34. With a great natural fitness. I mean, he's not got the pace anymore. But in that shallow striker role... He is quite good 18. Still. His first touch is 20. Yeah, he's just not got the physical anymore. Passing 18. Oh. So they do have a good team. Um, they've got some cracking players like Mancini, who is there, who I remember quite fondly. Their, their defence is Mexes. Uh, he scored that world-class overhead kick. Juan is there as well. He's fast. Abadal is there. He's, he's, he's a great left-back. Look at that, 19 acceleration. So... What's they the got budget some players. What's They've the got budget some there? players there. Uh, the budget is £26 million. Pounds, which Never is going to be a lot there, though, is it? It's <clears> good still. It's good so still. So they're 11 points off Juventus in the yeah. league. Uh, so that's 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 an option for you. As well as, of course, as you mentioned, the Schalke, well, Stuttgart job and the Schalke job, who are both uh, in the UEFA Cup positions yeah. too. Could you come over to me and cause a little bit of havoc? Mm. Uh, Stuttgart budget... Is fifty one million pound. The Schalke one is forty nine million pound. There's always money in the Bundesliga. They're capped in. Where's a cap? <laughs> so there we go. Those are the options that you've got, Dad. But before you make that decision, you've got to add something to your trophy cabinet. And that's the Portuguese League. That's right. Fair play to Dad for getting yet another Champions League trophy. But the main job for Glory Hunter was securing the Portuguese League. And he can finally leave Portugal. But where does he go next?